Why hello there guys, Qwerty Afro here, bringing you another Train Simulator 2015 video. Uh, just released now is the West Coast Mainline uh, Trent Valley route, which has been just recently released today when I'm, rec I'm recording at around like midnight or whatever, just crazily where I like to do my little recording sessions or whatever. But uh, I definitely wanted to get this uh, route, definitely been looking at it for quite a while and uh, it's finally out and I'm here to do my little thoughts and opinions of it, give you my kind of first taste on one of these general kind of like uh, standard scenarios that come with it so I'm, I'm very eagerly excited and can't wait to get in and uh, show you a few cool things. Uh, from what I've played of it so far, I've played a bit of some of the other scenarios but not fully kind of completed anything but so far I really love what I'm seeing and it's slowly turning to, my, to be kind of my favourite uh, route now after the uh, South London network so uh, this definitely is something really I'm really excited to do a video on. Shouts before we get into the video go to Gaming Racer HD and Peter Wolf. That's again Gaming Racer HD and Peter Wolf. Their links are stopping down below and those were the shouts. So good afternoon it's a beautiful day on the West Coast main line but the line is as busy as ever. Please wait. Uh, uh, please await the train ahead to clear the next section and then proceed into Stafford Station. Have a nice day. We surely will. So we are here in on the West Coast Main Line Trent Valley route, finally. And uh, first thing to note is the Class 350 is finally in the game as an official kind of like train. Uh, so far in the game, it's just been as like uh, skins and stuff that have reskinned uh, 450 essentially. But in in pretty much real life, it is essentially a 450 with a pantograph because it has the gangway doors, the sticking out gangway doors. Everything pretty much is uh, the same, even the layouts and stuff. It has the, if I, you know, just quickly shuffle along here, the 450s have the kind of first class that's in the middle of one of the uh, uh, middle carriages. Uh, that's pretty much the same with the 450s as well and Southwest trains. So it is essentially in real life a 450 with uh, a pantograph on it. It's just called the 350. Essentially, so but it's in the game. Uh, no branding of London Midland, unfortunately, which uh, sad. But you know, at least we get the kind of colours and stuff, and the whole kind of patterns and stuff. It's sad that this route also doesn't get the kind of uh, Pendolino Virgin Trains um, 390 scenarios or whatever. One thing that also comes with it is the uh, direct rail services class 66, which is cool as well. So if you don't have the 66, you get like free, the free, uh, 66 for free for this route, and you get scenarios of it and scenarios of the 350. But again, as I said, it's sad that we're not seeing anything. I'm really sad that the 390 doesn't get any kind of love. I don't get. It should be included in more things now. Like this could have been great to add. And we have obviously we're going to get loads of these West Coast Mainline um, kind of routes because obviously they're building up to kind of link it all together and eventually hopefully we'll get like London Euston to to Birmingham New Street. But it just would be cool to see more of it and as well like the Super Voyager with like you know. But hopefully but they probably won't be able to get Virgin licensing. I'm, I'm guessing that's probably one of the most expensive licenses to get for the game but it would be cool to just have like the plane livery or maybe even that's licensed as well but anyway it's cool to have the 350 in the game uh, nice cool authentic uh, destination things there with like London Houston which is cool that also has something really cool uh, which I'm going to show you inside the train as well once we get going let's set up the uh, headlights it's quite a lot of configurations with that and uh, I think that's it the horn it's two toned but it's one of those two torn two torn horns that you press space bar and it just does the two horn by itself so you can't actually control the high and low pitch horns which is sad but uh, it's alright at least it has a you know two torn horn it's a bit crazy though the horn that sound it doesn't really sound that that good in in my opinion right back in the cab let's get the reverse of forward and uh, let's get going because this is obviously Korea because you know that's the only thing I can really drive when the route like this gets released because not many people uh, make any kind of like scenarios and stuff quickly to put onto the workshop so Korea scenarios will be for a bit and then hopefully maybe in the future we'll get some you know cool stuff I know people said already they've got uh, I think uh, Minecraft Modman said he was gonna make a patch um, for me for uh, that has like a branding patch or whatever which is also really cool so it'd be cool to do stuff in the future with it anyway the cab of the 350 is actually slightly different than like the you know the 450 uh, st slightly different more things uh, like here you have this kind of low speed kind of uh, speed control which is pretty cool like if you press it it gets pressed like that and uh, it just goes into kind of low speed control which is cool like it sets the speed at that or whatever that's really cool uh, 
other than that, pretty much all the kind of same kind of normal stuff, you know, pantograph switches, uh, DRA, uh, uh, windscreen wipers, etc. versus sander, etc. Is that sander? Yes, it is. Uh, signal button here. Radio thing doesn't work as normal. This is a uh, enable SMS wiper, which is I don't know what actually that is, but uh, might change the speed of the wiper or something like that. I'm not too sure. Uh, one thing that's different is up here we have a kind of a destination thing, uh, which uh, changes actually your destination inside the train, which is cool. But we're just gonna leave it on London Euston because that also, which uh, which will come up actually very shortly, it controls the for the first time in the game is onboard announcements. And once they start hitting, I'll go into the passenger view, which is a little different to normal passenger views, and I will uh, stop and uh, let you hear some of the announcements that actually come up on board this train, which is, I think, just really cool. Even though they're not the legit ones, I think still very cool that we're actually having onboard announcements finally in the game, which is uh, something which is really exciting. So to get to the passenger view, which is actually a little bit trickier, uh, instead of pressing five as it normally is, you actually have to shuffle through. You have to actually shuffle through the cameras. This, this is the limited stop service for London Euston, calling at Stafford, Nonington, Rugby, and London Euston only. The next stop is Stafford. Please remember to take all of your luggage and personal belongings with you when leaving the train. Onboard announcements. How cool is that? Even though it's not accurate to the actual real life announcements, which also is license and copyright or whatever, that's really nice and it's really refreshing to have that. And that's cool. Like there's these onboard things like turn. So that will say Stafford when it's now entering Stafford, and then it also when it's uh, when we're going along, it says this train is for like London Euston or whatever. So it's really cool. Obviously, it doesn't have really like in detailed like stuff like when you stop at the station and when you open the doors it doesn't go this station is Stafford changing or whatever but it's nice to have these kind of like uh, onboard announcements that uh, that you know say oh the next station's this and I, and I like that it's, it's a really nice addition to the game so we're entering Stafford here very nice little detail station here this uh, map is made uh, by Dovetail Games and also Thompson Interactive, which is cool. You can tell that Thompson Interactive work their magic with their detail and stuff, and they really do some really cool things. So we're just entering here nicely and slowly, and start slowing down. I can report that the brakes are at least uh, better than the 450. They are still a bit squashy and a bit sluggish, but I have to say, compared to the to the to the uh, to the free uh, to the 450, they're slightly better, but still. Still sluggish, if I have, to, I have to say so myself. The doors as well are pretty good. Nice uh, door animations. They actually open and close with in with the sound, which is really nice. Stafford here, Stafford University, home of the great minds. Another very cool thing is, look at this. Now, this is something I don't understand. Why couldn't it have been done before? Like, I know it's not a dynamic countdown display, but it's refreshing to have it looking like this. It's not just the normal kind of, oh, if you keep all your baggage with you uh, when leaving the train. I like I hate that what, every single like route had that. And now it's just nice to see something that actually has something different. I think like another route that has it is also is Bristol to Exeter. That has like a like you know a refreshing like it doesn't have the normal one. It has just the uh, actually no it has the normal kind of thing that scrolls around but it has a, it differently styled. And this one's actually the first one that actually shows like okay this is a train coming it's on time or whatever. It's not dynamic but it's it's nice to have that you know in the game and it's just nice to look at on the station which is really cool so railway driver the next station is uh noon new eaton none eaton sorry if i pronounced that wrong none eaton do, 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 do i close the doors oh no they've Closed my by themselves, but I, I think the, the 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 sound was just a little bit delayed there. Anyway, let's uh, get this train rolling. Nice, cool sparks there on the pantograph, which is cool. But I have to say, this is just very cool, very nice, very nice addition, very nice, cool little nicks and knacks that you're finding in, on this route, and it's just really nice to see. 
uh, than trying out new stuff from finally uh, some stuff that's been just, you know, it should have been in the game. Like, so right now that's for like London Euston. If we hop over here, we can see things like to crew, uh, London Euston again, uh, crew again. Oh, it's uh, slowed down a bit because I am. I'm not I'm not with my train, but I want to show off certain things. I don't think this is a platform that's in you. So yeah, you have loads of things with uh, different destinations. What's this? Glasgow Airport Link. Ooh, I paid up once. I hate this kind of in-game advertisement of stuff. Like, just why does it have to be in there? Like, I paid for this route. I don't need to see more things that I should pay for to get. Right, let's head out. So yeah, so that's for the destination, which is really cool. Then if I swap through the cameras, this screen also here tells the time, which is very nice. And none of these buttons up here work. Oh, does that work? Oh, you can turn off the brightness. That's very nice. Uh, then you have things like uh, down here that show different sort of screens, which show like sound and lighting, emergency brake. I don't think you can change any of these, to be honest. I don't think you can. It just shows you information. Uh, get to swap around the screens, show the kind of lighting settings, etc. So it's just a really a, an information display. I don't think you can change anything from this screen, but it's just a nice little addition to have that kind of stuff in there. I'm sorry I'm not showing much of what's happening in front of the train, but I'm just cycling through the camera showing you guys what you, what you can expect with this kind of train. I don't get what this camera is for, it just kind of shows this side of the train, or like it's just a kind of the middle camera that shows kind of, you know, what's, what's happening here, or like, you know, the gangway's in the way, but, you know, shows you both sides or whatever which is which is cool then we go into the passenger view so there's different actual passenger cameras within the actual you know cab view the, the primary cab view so it's all integrated in one it's not you don't press five and you don't get these kind of things you have to shuffle through the uh the change camera button through the kind of main kind of thing so this is the first one which is like up here where you can turn your head around and like look down at the the table or whatever look at this guy and see things out these windows. One thing that's really cool is if you press the doors, they open. <laughs> this is kind of really cool. I like this. Uh, it would have been cool to have another camera down at the other side to kind of open both of them through like that. But that's really cool. And then you just cut, uh, click them to close. So that's that's very nice there. And I am dangerous for really, you know just driving like this. But I'm showing off the train, and it's pretty cool. That I like. That the gangway doors, very nice. I'm. I'm very happy they added something like that. Just, just it's just nice to see these kind of new things on a on a route. So it, it kind of justifies the the very heavy price tag of twenty four ninety nine. Then we shuffle over to this camera, which reminds me of the, uh, which reminds me of the camera that we get in the three seven eight in the London Overground three seven eight, which is nice where we get a kind of view here in the middle of the uh, like uh, two door two door exits or whatever. So. And also, as you saw, I think, and I didn't actually show it, but once you stop at a station and open the doors, they actually do open from the inside, which is cool, like the uh, uh, 378 and the, uh, what's it, the Kia, Japan, the Japanese train or whatever opens from the inside as well. So that's cool as well. And then we shuffle over to the next final camera, which is the one which actually shows you this kind of like onboard train uh, announcement display, which like now it's showing this train is for London Euston which is, I, I like that, like, it's not, you know, it's not obviously going to show the actual things, like, you know, what, like, you know, this next station is this, change for this, but it's nice that it has this kind of simple kind of thing of, uh, uh, of whatever, of this kind of simple announcement of, like, oh yeah, this train is for London Houston, other announcements actually do come on saying, oh yeah, for safety announcements and stuff like that, which is also a nice addition, you'll hear those throughout the journey, supposedly, but, I, I'm really, really stoked and happy for this kind of edition, and I hope you guys do enjoy this, this kind of like edition. When you, if if you've bought this route already, or if you're planning to buy this route, it's a very, very good. Let me just check. Oh, this is one thing. Oh no, that's just a speed restriction. Uh, this is one thing I hate that you can't, you can't. There's no quick way of getting back to the front cab. You have to shuffle through the cameras to get back. But this is the last camera, and then you basically go back to the front essentially. And that's pretty much it. Also, I've got to turn on the nice uh, little instrument panel lights, which is uh, which is very nice. But yeah, that's the only kind of annoying thing. You have to shuffle through the cameras. Uh, there's no like direct um, button to press to just go straight back to the to the cab view. But other than that, that's the kind of kind of whole basis of this train. And to be honest, it is quite a 
I thought it would just be, oh yeah, it'd just be a 350 and it'll be just kind of similar to the 450 or whatever, it's just with a pantograph. But I like the kind of new features that have come with this trade. The destination board machine, the onboard announcements, the kind of like cool little screen up here that shows you some information. Uh, even the kind of lights and stuff here, like uh, you press L to turn on the instru panel, uh, instrument panel lights and you press L again to turn on the cab lights. And then you press shift L to turn on the turn off the cab lights and then you press shift L again to turn off the instrument lights and this works of course you, know, you can't cannot have a I, I don't get like some trains do come with a proper like cover uh, a sunblind cover and some just don't I think every train should just have it <laughs> but that's basically the train and uh, I have to say it's pretty good for like a train I thought that wouldn't really be that much at all. It definitely has quite a lot of things to be excited about and I think the onboard announcements are definitely the the funnest thing out of everything, in my opinion. Anyway, we have to uh, increase our speed here because obviously uh, there's about 30 miles away to Nuneaton, so we gotta we gotta get on a uh, increase the power, get up to 110, which I hopefully is uh most of this line. I hope there's not many speed restrictions in this mine, but it shouldn't really be. But overall, I'm very impressed with this map. Very, very much so impressed with this map. So far, what I've played of it. I haven't played it fully. Uh, we are doing a uh, line here from Stafford to uh, to Rugby, which is the kind of main kind of sections of this route. Uh, I do think it's something like 69 kilometers long or miles long, somewhere around that kind of region. Uh, also, the biggest kind of emphasis on this line is to do with the freight, which obviously, as I said, the other the free, class uh, 66 comes with like the frail rail services or whatever, livery or whatever, and that also has like loads of kind of scenarios for it. it has more scenarios for the freight than the class 350, because I think most most this is like one of the busiest parts of the whole uh, british network for freight like 40 and like i was reading like some of the uh, information that was uh, down below in the uh, information on the steam page and apparently 40 percent of the british freight goes on this line so it's definitely a very uh, important kind of you know section of the of the, of the whole british network for rails uh, for rail freight but so far the scenery and stuff looks very nice, it's very pleasant to look at. Uh, I don't know much of these areas around uh, wherever I'm driving because obviously I haven't been to them or whatever so it's a very nice refreshing Smoking thing. is prohibited on this service. This includes the toilets which are fitted with sensitive smoke alarms. There you go, another, another little uh, train announcement there so that's like it just uh, randomly says those kind of like safety announcements and stuff like that which is just excellent like I like that and I really do hope that this is the beginning of more kind of improved uh, onboard announcements and stuff and maybe possibly in the future more station announcements and stuff it's good to see that they're changing up with the kind of station board displays hopefully in the future we might see some uh, station announcements as well as more improved onboard announcements because obviously if they can't obtain the rights to get the actual onboard announcements, they can easily get some voice actors or whatever to just do it. And as I've said in previous videos, call me up Dovetail Games, I'll definitely sit down and do a, uh, you know, a QWERTY Afro uh, voice pack for onboard announcements. Hell yeah, I'll give it free of charge to be honest to people. It's going to be a very nice, pleasant drive. Still 24 miles to Nuneaton, but uh, overall, what I'm seeing, the FPS is a little bit tanking, I have to say, on this uh, on this route. I don't know why. It, it does look it, the detail is there. Like I can see that that there would be quite a lot of like FPS like lag and drop because there is sort of detail around what I'm seeing. So I, I I'm not too surprised that it is tanking a little bit on the FPS side. But overall, it's all right. We're kind of averaging here between uh, about 15 to 30 FPS, and I just heard, like it's good even if it just stays at like 15 or even 25 or a constant. But if it just 
dips up and the, the, the only re the, the kind of time the only time when like FPS is really bot like it's it's a huge problem is when it starts changing and say if it's a constant 15 FPS or a constant 20 FPS if it's constant that's fine at least it'll be smooth but the only time it starts really tanking is when it starts changing when it flickers and changes it's like say it goes from 30 to 10 and then 10 to 30 15 20 and it keeps fluctuating that's when you will see all the kind of like lag and stuff like that because the FPS is changing obviously you're going to visibly notice that but if the FPS is at least low but constant then you don't really notice too much what is happening so yeah. but so far it's not too taxing uh, hopefully now these kind of open outstretch where it's less detailed obviously there's going to be some towns and stuff are going to be driving through obviously on the fast branch here so we're going to be you know going along well let's do a bit of, a bit of flyover lovely But tell me guys, what are your thoughts? What do you think about the onboard announcements? Do you think they're alright? I know they're not accurate, but do you like the kind of addition of, of, of this to the game? Is this like a good sign for like things that hopefully come and hopefully better improve them, whatever? Uh, or is this maybe this is probably I, I'm guessing that this is more of a thing from Thompson Interactive. I don't think this is something that Doctor Games personally did, or maybe they did. I'm uh, maybe I'm like eating my own words here, but uh, like we've gotten before, like even from say like Just Trains, they've done certain routes that have uh, on uh, station announcements and stuff like that, which is cool. So you know it's been done before and it can be done so it's cool to now see it on like an official route which uh, gives me some hope that maybe future routes might be uh, slightly like better with these kind of like options and stuff but the FPS does seem to tank a little bit it does go to down like to about 10 or whatever or 11 so it is uh, it is a bit taxing on the scenery the scenery density is quite you know quite high on, on this route so but it does look very nice. The route does look very nice and pretty, and um, it does have. Let me just uh, pop out here, have a look here. What we're oh, London Euston calling out to Tamworth, uh, Hatherstone, Nuneaton, Rugby, Northampton, Milton Keys, Central. Oh my God, that's, these are these are the stations I want. I want Northampton. I want Milton Keys. I want Watford Junction. I want London Euston. Like it's it's like almost we're almost there to having maybe the Birmingham New Street to London Euston part of the West Coast Main Line. We're so close. Hopefully one day it will it will ha it has to be done. Like now they've done they literally they've done the West Coast uh, the West Coast Main Line. Uh, uh, you know the, uh, the they've done the North. They've done the Overshap, and then they've done this one. So you know the Trent Valley route. So. We're just missing one more part, essentially. We're missing the Birmingham New Street to London Euston part now. Because I, I think with this route, it bypasses some of the Birmingham uh, stuff. So, it, it's... Oh, I, I can't wait. Until that day, that will probably be my favourite part of the West Coast Main Line. I know probably some other parts are probably better, more beautiful, and probably better to drive on. But I really am looking forward for the London Euston to Birmingham New Street section because that's probably going to be my favourite section, and that's also going to be a section where we'll be able to utilise the Class Three Seven Eight, the London Overground Class Three Seven. That's going to be a very good section for like Watford Junction down to London Euston. That's like a whole London Overground line. That'll be just amazing. We're passing here another class 350. Let's get back into the uh, into the. Oh no, we've passed it because this is the first carriage. Oh, sorry. oh, I can even open the doors from here. Oh wow, that's uh, that's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, the detail here also in the uh, passenger view. Apparently, people are saying that this isn't the actual London Midland branding of uh, of the passenger view. Maybe just the branding part maybe is missing or whatever. But. Uh, Probably there'll be skins and stuff on the train, so I'm, I'm not really doubting that that won't happen. Uh, 
In other news, um, I finally actually sorted out stuff with like tickets and stuff to go to uh, Croatia this year, finally, which is something uh, that has been a long time coming. Like, literally, since I've gotten back from Scotland, and I have told my sister basically to sort out stuff while I was in Scotland, but then I bas it basically got all left uh, when I got back. So when we got back, uh, we've just been kind of delaying it, trying to find tickets, and literally the worst thing to do when you're going on holiday or well, we're not going on holiday, we're going to see our parents, but it is sort of a semi-holiday, semi, you know, family kind of reunion, kind of stuff like that. But the worst thing to do when you're planning this, like for like some uh, getaways or whatever, is you shouldn't do it. Like literally, they did you our flight is in two weeks, so we basically sorted out everything like within a few days now uh, for like in two weeks when we're going and the worst thing to do is literally sorting out very close to like when you're going in the summer because that's when you know tickets are the most expensive and it's just all like that kind of craze and like getting things sorted out where like accommodation and uh, you know maybe because we're probably gonna have to rent a car as well this year like we did last year which went very successfully but other than that, uh, we did sort it out. This year we're doing a bit of like a crazy kind of normally we'd take British Airways directly to Dubrovnik. We go to uh, damn I can't remember the uh, the uh, the uh, airport name for Dubrovnik. I think it is uh, uh, L G G something, I don't know. Lima Kov Kov something. I am not, not I can't remember. But we're going to Dubrovnik. Uh, normally we would take direct flights to Dubrovnik with like British Airways and before British Airways we went with um, Croatian Airlines. Uh, this year because we left it too late and British Airways gets mega expensive when you leave it too late. And um, why is my train all of a sudden uh, slowing down? Okay, my train all of a sudden is slowing down for some really weird reason, but I'm not losing any points. Which means... what? Pantograph VB switch. Yeah, this Pantograph VB switch like flickers on and off. I don't know if it's something with... Uh, something with that, I'm not too sure. Hello, anyway, it was slowing down for some reason. Pantograph VCB up, down, no. Oh. Okay. Okay, that's very weird. I don't know why it stopped there, but. Interesting. I actually have no idea what the hell's going on here. What what the hell's going on? Does that yeah, that turns the pantograph off. I want it to turn on. Oh, because I've left the um There we go. Because I left the uh, low speed control. But what why is it? Can I just go, please? What's up with this? Pantograph VCB switch. Yeah, well... Why are we having a problem here? I don't know what, I don't know what the problem is here. Something's happened here where the pantograph or something... I don't know what's happened because like, it's not even telling me. Like, I'm not losing points, so... But the thing is, now when I start to get up to speed... That's really, and now I'm getting overtaken by slow trains. Like, this is just embarrassing. Like, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? Okay, so if I just do that, and do I have to build up pressure? Is it something with the brake pressure or whatever? So if I go now just on off. I hear s Train. Oh! Train stop override. Did, did I probably pre did I press something? Passenger alarm. Train stop override. Uh, wouldn't be anything like that. I actually. Oh, hello. Something on the screen here. Can I get to that, please? Uh, dragging 
service brake, DMS1, dragging brake detected, brake supplied and traction inhibited, stop uh, stop. Ensure that necessary arrangements are in place for your personal safety. It may be possible to continue by ensure throttle brake lever is in the brake position. Okay, it's in the brake position. Uh, return the reverser to the. F no, rotate this to neutral. Yep, it's on neutral. Uh, do I have to? Um. No, that won't do anything. All defects must enter into repair, but return the reverser to forward. If the dragging brake fault indicator lamp goes off on the left hand cabin fault plane, the train can continue service. Uh, has it gone off? Yeah, it looks like it's gone off. Uh. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, that's very interesting. So, the train gets faults. <laughs> uh, the dragging service brake. Or whatever that's uh, called. Okay, so we uh, sorted that out. So, I don't know if that's like something that I did. If, if that was my fault. Or if that was actually just a, a, just a pure natural train fault or something like that. Is that maybe why most uh, London Midland services are delayed in real life? That it just trains just are faulty or whatever. But I don't know. That's interesting. That's cool. Uh, I didn't see that up there, but that screen then is pretty useful if it tells you faults and it tells you things that you need to do to rectify the fault. So I guess that's that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let me just quickly check our arrival time. We need to arrive there at oh, we need to oh, we definitely need to catch up in time. We need to arrive there at thirteen, uh, uh, thirty-five past one, and right now our ETA is thirty-six. So we definitely have to start speeding up and start getting there quickly. Uh, we we should be able to. I think we should be able to to make it. But anyway, as I was saying with Croatia, we this, uh, this year instead of taking a direct uh, route because the direct routes are the most expensive to Dubrovnik because only British Airways, EasyJet, Monarch and a few other airlines do it but it's very expensive to go directly. Like, it's the most expensive thing you can do. Um, EasyJet now even becomes more expensive than like things like British Airways because of the baggage uh, hold kind of stuff and uh, yeah basically all the cheap airlines are pretty much now as expensive as like, like something as British Airways. So we had to actually improvise and do things where we actually uh, where we actually have to now do stops in, in certain cities or whatever. So this year we're actually going with Swiss Airways, uh, but it's co we're doing mainly co-shared flights, which I've actually never been on actually a co-shared flight where you know another. Uh, so basically, it's 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 it, the flight is by like I don't know like Swiss Air, which is what it said online when we were booking the tickets. It's a uh, it's. That it's organized by Swiss Air, and uh, but they have co-shared flights with another company. So on the way there, we are actually going with Lufthansa uh, from Heathrow to uh, Munich. We then have to wait for five hours in Munich, and then hop on another Lufthansa, which is still Swiss Air, but it's co-shared with Lufthansa. And it's a Lufthansa City Jet, I do believe, which is from um, from. Munich to Dubrovnik and then on the way back we're going from Dubrovnik to Zagreb uh, with Austrian Airways uh, but airlines but it's co-shared with Croatian Airlines so we're going to be going from Zagreb to uh, uh, from Dubrovnik to Zagreb with Croatian Airlines uh, co-shared Croatian Airlines and then from Zagreb to Vienna with co-shared uh, uh, co-shared Croatian Airlines and then from Vienna to London Heathrow with just Austrian Airlines, which is pretty cool. If you, if uh, it's, it's going to be an adventure, I've never actually been on like these kind of things where you have to do connecting flights. But what's also cool is I'm actually going to go on quite a few number few of aircraft. Actually, I'm not going to be just going on one type of aircraft. Normally, on a good year, I would have to go on like an A319 and then maybe a 737-200 or 300 uh, when I was going with British Airways and then British Airlines wasn't even much of the same kind of thing. It was mainly the uh, A319 or a320 this year however it's going to be quite a bit of a mixture 
there's going to be uh, there's going to be on the way there we're going with I think an A321 uh, then from Munich to Dubrovnik we're going on an Embraer jet so a smaller city Embraer jet which is pretty cool never been on one of those uh, then from uh, when we're going back from from uh, what is it from Dubrovnik to Zagreb we're taking just I think an A319 from Zagreb to Vienna we're taking a uh, Dash 8 so a prop plane which I've never been on a prop plane either so that's going to be really cool and then I think from uh, Vienna to London Heathrow it's just going to be an ordinary I think A321 or A320 so that's for me in one year uh, that many different planes I think that's a very very much a bonus for me it'd be very exciting and uh, uh, it'd be a very cool adventure to go like to play we're going to go to Munich and Vienna which I've never been to so uh, but I'm obviously going to be I'm not going to, I don't think we're going to be able to go out much well in Munich we might be able to because we're obviously waiting there for five hours so we might be able to go out a bit uh, but on the way back I don't think actually we might be able to in Vienna maybe I think we're there waiting for three hours or so so I don't know but it's good, definitely going to be a really really cool adventure whatever we do and I definitely can't wait to uh, to uh, do it and uh, travel on those different types of planes should be fun and then I think uh, I'm going to be there for about five weeks in Croatia which is going to be nice and then when I come back it's basically then just uh, then I'll be good, basically going to go to Spain for my, for another geology fieldwork trip but before that I have to sort a lot of things by moving into another house uh, for the year in Leicester I have to sort out getting because I'm going to probably be getting a new car as well Gonna leave my current car with my mother, and uh, gonna pro hopefully get a, a nicer, newer car. Probably the same type of car, same VW Polo or a VW Golf. I'm not too sure, but that all I have to sort out when I get back as well. So it's gonna be a bit of a hectic summer, but hopefully in Croatia it's gonna be very nice, very chillaxed, and really I just um, I can't wait for it. I definitely have earned the break over this year. It's been definitely a lot of work and a. Uh, uh, it's definitely been a lot of enjoyable work, a lot of cool people to meet and uh, a lot of cool experiences and a lot of things that I've learned which has just been fantastic and it's just all the kind of cool perks you get from university I suppose. Anyway, we are like about three miles now from Newton and uh, should be slowed down, we're obviously going to get the fancy uh, announcement soon on the uh, TA system, PA system or whatever it's called, announcement system. So we should brace for that. I don't think we're going to make it for the 35, which is unfortunate. Uh, I probably caused that brake failure myself annoyingly, but, uh, you know, I couldn't really do anything. I don't know what I actually did wrong there. Maybe I went, I think, is it that I probably went over the speed limit or something like that? And then it, like, activated the brakes or something like that? But... At least I didn't lose any points, but now when we get to Nuneaton, because I haven't arrived there on time, I'm probably going to lose points by that anyway, so... <laughs> Annoying, but you know, what can you do? Uh, but it was a cool thing to actually see with that screen up there with the whole kind of uh, fault system that you can correct the fault and stuff. I like the, I like the kind of trains where it gives you the kind of challenges that you, can, you might have, like... Uh, faults and stuff and you have to correct it yourself to get the, the train back up and running which I think is pretty cool right. approaching here now Eaton this is the limited stop service for London Euston. Oh, Point, I am I am entering this I am entering this station really really fast. The next stop is Non-Eaton. Please remember to take all of your luggage and personal belongings with you when Hopefully you a train. long platform. Oh, it is a long platform. We might be able to squeeze this in. Might. Oh, we might, might just do it. 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 Ooh. Oh, we just, we just, we just, we just, we just. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, you know what? 
That's uh, that's a quirky Afro video there for you right there. But hell with that. Oh look at that. <laughs> Some uh, you know, nice. I, if I if, if I didn't overrun, I wouldn't have seen this lovely uh, what's it? This lovely little wind thing that gets energy and stuff for the signal or something like that, which is pretty cool. But we'll ignore that little fault there. Um, but we're, anyway, we're late anyway, so I, I try to be on time there with a. Oh, and I get I get a time a timeless penalty there of plus two hundred and sixty one. Why not? <laughs> right away. Next stop is rugby. I don't get with the sounds of this door. The door sounds a little bit bugged. I'm I'm kind of feeling here what I'm seeing. Right off we go again. goes. Yeah, I think that it's it's a bit sad that we're just the only real thing around here is just three fifties. It's just it's just missing the kind of like you know the the flourish of uh, the flourish of three nineties, the flourish of uh, super voyages. Uh, you know, and even other stuff. I'm sure it's not just London Midland that, that and Virgin Trains that use this like section of route. I'm sure there's other kind of companies and stuff like Emergency that. Emergency information is displayed throughout this train for your safety. Please take time to read this information and report anything suspicious to a member of the onboard staff. Coolia. Okay, that's that's there. That's that's something there. What happens? What started to happen? That light started to flash or whatever. That pantograph thing, and then that kind of brake thing occurred or something like that. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna increase the power here, but I'm gonna keep an eye out for that because I really do not want to have another brake failure or something like that because that's weird. I don't even know why it's happening. Is it something that maybe I'm speeding up too fast, or there's not enough power, or something like that, or like I don't know. <laughs> Someone will probably tell me in comments down below, as people do, but yeah. But also, one thing also maybe a little bit of a negative with this route, it just didn't feel that there's a lot of stations and stuff. It just feels like for the passenger service kind of aspect, right now most of the scenarios are just this kind of limited stop service where it's literally Stafford, uh, Stafford or Nuneaton, and then Rugby, and then maybe there might be a few that go into these intermediate stations. I don't know. I'll probably in the future do a video of uh, covering more of these intermediate stations or something like that. But uh, overall, read really detailed route. Obviously, it's not the kind of main kind of thing. As I said, the main kind of thing I'm waiting for is Birmingham New Street to London New Street. I think that'll be the you know the icing on the cake. Because as I said, as I said, you're going to be able to use the 378. Hopefully, even like the Armstrong Powerhouse um, 321, class 321, London Midland would be pretty cool to see. And uh, just in general, just more stuff really. We're getting there basically. The West Coast Main Line is being built up bit by bit it costs quite a lot if you think about it it's like 25 quid for that one 25 quid for that one 25 quid for that one and then another 25 quid for that one so that's like 100 pounds for just the whole west coast main line unless you get them in the sales or whatever so then you're saving yourself quite a bit of money all right slightly nudge off the power now 10 miles to Rugby. Some little bits of this train feel a little bit weird in detail. Some, some, thing, some places like look a little fuzzy and I'm kind of noticing.
again, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Are you, are you going to be picking up? I know loads of people were bugging me to uh, play it once, uh, once like people were saying that it was going to come out, so loads of people were telling me about it and like, yeah, you should play it or whatever. And people were telling me really good things about it, like how detailed it was and whatever, so uh, I am definitely uh, agree with that. I love the train, I like the onboard announcements, I love the... Uh, you know, destination stuff and stuff like that, and it's cool. It's a good addition. It stands out as a train of itself. It's not just like a, it, it's not just like a 450. The only thing that really resembles a 450 is the sounds, really, to be honest. And I did hear some kind of thing where uh, Thompson Interactive made this uh, map not to be compatible with third-party things or something like that, unless they're free. So it might be a little bit problematic with like sound packs and stuff like that. So that's a little bit annoying there on that kind of aspect. But other than that, it's a pretty top-notch map. And I probably will be soon doing an actual video of the freight as well of it. Uh, of the freight aspect of the map. Also might be doing a covering of another freight video because the uh, recently I think even on the same day as this when this came out is uh, the uh, Class 66 uh, Pro Armstrong Powerhouse Sound Pack which uh, looks really good of what I've been seeing of it. Looks amazing. Probably surely do a video of that. On, I mean, it has like a one hour twenty scenario on the London to Ipswich branch, which uh, I'll definitely be covering. I have quite a few little bits of uh, scenarios and stuff that I've picked out. I have quite a few scenarios that I want to make into videos for my channel. So definitely over the summer, when it, whenever I get the chance you know, to, whenever I schedule it over the summer, you'll see uh, good some good scenarios and stuff like that definitely to come. Also, another thing I've been reading off uh, that's come out lately is the uh, <laughs> another post of Train Simulator 2016, where like uh, Doctor Games were like d uh, like uh, uh, answering like the top 10 myths about Train Simulator 2016, which I was just laughing throughout the whole kind of read of it. It was kind of really funny. Uh, <laughs> just I I don't know. Uh, just the fact that they want us to they want to basically they want existing players to pay for the base game again is a bit I just I don't know I, I don't know if I agree with that I just find that even though they're saying oh yeah but there's loads of new features and stuff is there really going to be anything like massively new it's the same game it's the same technology it's the same engine maybe if you add different modes and that that's that nothing really that I would want to pay another you know full price for for a game just because like, it's the same game it's just you're adding a few little bits and bobs to it and then you're saying oh well this is new these are new features or whatever I find that a bit a bit frustrating to hear and but I hope what have they been saying is like oh yeah this is quite a lot we're now adding we're building it up with all the like it's not going to be just a big annual bug fix or whatever because they've been doing all of that throughout this year with loads of patches and to be honest they have been updating the game considerably a lot this year with loads of patches there's been a considerable amount of um, kind of patchwork done this year so I kind of believe them in that kind of aspect I Train Simulator 2016 won't be just a, an annual bug fix patch, but I hope they can deliver with whatever they're saying with this kind of these new features. Obviously, for some of them are going to be these more extreme uh, scenarios, which, to be honest, I don't really find massively a new feature. It's just maybe just it's just a different variant of scenarios. But I don't know. Um, I won't completely eat my words when maybe when I play it. But I hope it might be something a little bit worthwhile. But I still don't fully agree to existing players who have been dedicated to this game who have bought in with the kind of DLCs and stuff like every single DLC I've bought myself for this game and pretty much most of them have been at full price I don't feel like comfortable that I have to pay again for the base game just because they're saying oh there's going to be you know new stuff for sure in this one uh, like there hasn't been and they kind of acknowledge that all their previous kind of like yearly updates have just been like this a is the limited stop service for London Euston calling at Rugby and London Euston only the next stop is Rugby please remember to take all of your luggage and personal belongings with you when leaving the train like they even acknowledge that their game 
the, the annual updates that they were doing were basically bug fixes. Like when the, the question was answered in that post, they were saying that like, this year won't be, that's why we're charging everyone again, essentially, for it. And then still more questions popping up about like if the next gen um, will support current DLC and that, to be honest, is probably not, not going to happen. Like people are like they're just talking about oh yeah the train submit 2016 well definitely definitely and then they're not they don't they, they, they just, it almost feels like they're not comfortable but to say that the next gen one will just be a fresh start and that all the dlc that we paid into with this current gen will not really matter in the next gen that's essentially what they are saying but anyway that's that's a whole another thing to worry about in the future when that happens Well, we're here finally at Rugby. Nice, he does it into the, uh, to the station. Let's get into the, uh, let's get into this kind of, actually no, let's get into, uh, get into this view. Ooh, it's a bit zoomed in there. And I think that's it, I think we have to, we have to drive up and go by Kibzu Tunnel up main, so it's not over yet, but the main kind of thing is, again the lovely destination board's very nice. Want to get London News Slowly, pretty true. And then here, crew. And you have other ones like Birmingham News Street on some platforms or whatever, it's pretty cool. Right away, driver, next station will be London Euston. So I have to. See, right now, the, uh, this part of the doors are not in sync, which is annoying. And you can hear there the, uh, the, the, the guard buzz or whatever. Alright, let's. Uh, Let's get this uh, let's get train on the road to London Euston. So uh, we're gonna be in a bit of a race here with the class 66. The climate rail. Ah, that's what it is. I was wondering what that kind of uh, what that kind of uh, what's it the, the red flash was. Uh, that was going through the train, the kind of like red shadow flash. It's actually the uh, the, the the red signal that's uh, like a red si or the signal or whatever that goes through the train. I was like wondering, like what the hell? It's like some kind of like a f like flash warning or something like that. So. Yeah. Right there we go. This does it past the uh, freight unit. interesting thing that there is a extended bit of this scenario where you go from rugby which is probably the sudden terminus of whatever uh, is on this map and then you continue off into a tunnel which hopefully eventually is the next iteration down to London Euston which would be amazing also I, have, uh, I haven't mentioned the pantographs and stuff. I mean, the the overhead wires and stuff with the kind of steel f uh, work fr uh, structuring is really detailed. Smoking is prohibited on this service. This includes the toilets, which are fitted with sensitive smoke alarms. Thank you for letting me know. And it just says go via, so I'm guessing when we pass it, it'll just stop the scenario automatically. Oh, hello. Twenty. There's a twenty coming up. Is 
Is it through this part? Wait, is a 20 coming up? I hope it isn't. Because I'm definitely not going to slow down for 20 in time. Yes, there is coming up. Better slow down. Somewhere up there or whatever. I see people on the track or whatever, so I'm definitely going to be slowing down for this. Yeah. It's probably going to start here now. It's going to lose me points. There we go. Ah, oh, career scenario, I love you. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Like, l I've lost all my points within a space of, like, about 50 yards. Like, how is that fair? Like, how is that fair? This is. I hope this is one thing that they completely redesign the whole career point system. I think, like, that's just not fair. Like, 10 yards and I lose pretty much half of my points. Like, it just... This is why I hate career. I think it's just a completely stupid, like, thing. Of the, the point system is stupid. Like, literally, if you do something so slightly wrong, you get penalised way beyond... Stupid. Honestly, just, I hate it. Like, what? I lost 300 and something points within 10 yards. I've driven the whole route, done it well, I've driven over whatever, how many miles or whatever, and then only 10 yards completely ruins me. I don't get that. I get, like, if you pass a red light, that's game over. I get that. But a little, you know, speed restriction or something like that, that's, like, you know, if you enter it slightly above it, it shouldn't really, like, penalise you that much. But, you know, what can you do? It's Korea. Finally, we're at this uh, Killsby Tunnel up main. Probably gonna get, I could have probably got gold there. Wasn't too far off gold. But now I'm probably stuck with bronze because, you know. It's Korea. I don't even know why I get angry. I don't play career that much. I only play career when I when a new route comes out because that's the only thing available. Is that another speed restriction up? What? Oh, that fur! I thought that was like transitioning into fur. I didn't. Well, you know. But we lost all our points. So uh, thank you guys for watching this video. <laughs> Join me again in another career scenario where we again lose more points. Well done, Drew. Well done. The scenario will now end. Thank you. Thank God it did end. Ah. <sighs> Good old career scenario. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the West Coast mainline Trent Valley uh, route. Uh, definitely would recommend it. Uh, good addition. Hopefully, get into that one day ever, that Birmingham New Street to London Euston. Hopefully, they're working down southward, so it'll probably eventually be in the game at some point. But uh, are you going to pick it up? Tell me in the comments. What do you guys think of it? What do you think of the onboard announcements? Are they a cool addition? Are we going to see some more improved ones in the future? Who knows? Uh, other than that, the shout outs go to Gaming Racer HD and Peter Wolf. That's again Gaming Racer HD and Peter Wolf. The links and stuff will be down below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Bye, guys. We ain't never given up because we ain't born for that. Gotta catch a fast to do. The ship is cruising, it's true, cruising.